This is how to change the serpentine belt and tensioner on a 2010 Ford Transit Connect XLT. To open the uh, hood, it's e not as easy as you think. You gotta move that uh, forward icon back and use your key to uh, twist it left and right and pop it open. Once it's up, let's take a look at the problem. You can see the serpentine belt is loose here. And if you look on the other side, we can find the problem. Again, the loose belt, and you see the tensioner belt, excuse me, the tensioner wheel has broken apart. So that's what we're going to repair today. First thing we do is get the tensioner belt out of there. Now, it's easy for us to pull it out because it had already broken off. Uh, it may take, uh, you might need to remove the tension to do it on yours. And I'll show you how to do that later in the video. First thing we'll do is get this uh, radiator reservoir out of the way. So we're, it's uh, fastened with uh, one, I believe, a 10 millimeter bolt. Everything in here is millimeters. So we'll remove this bolt. And uh, the only other attachment after that is going to be where it hooks on to the frame. This is the other side of the reservoir. Just take a screwdriver and pry it off of uh, the, it's on a, a little steel lip in the frame. You'll just pop it off. And once it's loose, you can set it aside. You don't need to disconnect any hoses. Just leave it as is. Just twist it to the side. And I like to use a screwdriver uh, to hold it in place. We're going to need a lot of light to do our work. I put my work light down inside. It seems to work the best for me because all your work really is going to be down inside there. Uh, you'll need to, unfortunately, for this job, you're going to have to uh, jack it up and take the wheel off. That's my recommendation. This is the uh, passenger front wheel. So you want to loosen the lug nuts all the way around before you get started. After you've done that, you can go ahead and insert your jack and get ready to hoist it up and put it on a jack stand. When you're selecting a spot to jack it up, make sure you're choosing the frame, the steel frame, and not the floor pan. You can see here the selections I've made. I'm looking for rigid steel frame. That's the jack stand, and it's going to receive the weight of the vehicle once I release the tension on the jack. I don't recommend using your uh, the jack that, that came with your vehicle for emergency repairs. Uh, simply because to, it doesn't take using it very many times before it wants to twist apart. Uh, it's really just a uh, almost a temporary use tool. It can't be used over and over again. It just can't take the constant abuse. It's good for one shot. Finish taking off your, once the wheel's in the air, you can finish taking off your lug nuts and pull the tire. Let's take a look at a diagram to see what we're looking at. You can see the pattern on the serpentine belt and the wheels involved. And the splash guard on the right is what we're taking off. So we're looking at the bolts now to see what we have to take off. There's two bolts holding in that uh, splash guard. And this is just a plastic guard in between the, uh, the serpentine belt and the wheel. And again, I think this is also a 10 millimeter bolt here. Two 10 millimeter bolts. I could be wrong. But uh, everything's going to be 10 or 13 or 8. There's not much variety. Once we've taken that off, it just slides right out. And here, that's me putting it back in because I didn't have footage of taking it out. But that's the piece you're working working with. 
once you get it loose you can take that right out let's look at the schematic again you've got the the piece on the right that's circled on the right you've got that taken out now let's look at the tensioner on the left it's a wheel with on a uh, metal housing and there it is mine's destroyed yours may look different it may be intact but uh, You can, uh, you can reach in even from the top and loosen up. There's two bolts. One at the top and one at the bottom. And both uh, nearest the front of the vehicle. And again, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. I was able to take mine out from the top because I took the wheel off first and then took the assembly out. I do not recommend doing it this way. It's because I didn't know what I was doing. It's better to go in from underneath where you can actually reach it. So for the rest of the video, you'll see me going in underneath to install the new one. You don't need to take the wheel off to get your tensioner out. You can leave it intact. And when you're replacing these tensioners, uh, you're going to use the same hardware to reinstall it, the same bolts. So take care of them. Uh, make sure you oil them up for a long life. And uh, you, I've got the new tensioner there on the left and the old tensioners on the right on the ladder. And you can see they're of different, a different manufacturer. You'll need, if you find your tensioner's bad, you'll have to replace the whole assembly, not just the wheel. If the wheel goes bad, the whole tensioner has to be replaced. So let's slip it back up in place. And you see the two bolt, how, the bolts on the right, one at the top and one at the bottom and both are on the right side as you face it or towards the front of the vehicle. Just uh, slip it in there and finger tighten each bolt and then you can uh, start ratcheting them on. With that splash guard out of the way and the wheel taken off you can actually work on it. I don't know how I was able to get it out from above that was that was difficult and I don't recommend it there is a uh, torque spec on this but I don't know what it is and I don't really care um, tight seems to work As with anything that you're tightening that has more than one bolt, you'll once you get one tight, you'll go and check the other, and you'll find it's got a little bit more to tighten, and then go back and check the other one again, and and so forth. Kind of like a star pattern on your on your lug nuts, you'll go back and forth until everything's tight. All right, the moment of truth. Time to install that serpentine belt. Take a good look at your schematic, and then we'll go underneath and take a look at your wheels and make sure you know where you're going to be putting your, uh, your, your belt. Just kind of envision that. Maybe make yourself a, a cheat sheet. And then once you're satisfied, you can go up top, grab your belt, and uh, slip it down in there. I recommend warming up the belt first, set it out in the sun, let it get warm while you're working on the vehicle so when it's time to slip the belt in it's easy to work with. 
this one had been sitting out in the cold and boy it was uh, kind of tough to, to work with but uh, just go ahead and slip it in you'll find you can get it around uh, almost all the wheels except for one uh, I chose not to put it around the bottom driving uh, uh, pulley uh, but you can slip it around all the others once you've got it draped over the top of the wheels and uh, it's generally around the wheels you can go underneath and start manipulating the belt and pushing it over uh, the water pump pulley and so forth and uh, configuring it the way you want so once you've got it all wrapped around most of the pulleys you can start uh, turning it by hand that's what I'm doing here and you can see your wheels turning successfully uh, once they look the way you want them to look and you see I've got one more pulley to put it on that's the main drive pulley that the engine's turning and uh, I'll need to, uh, to remove the tension in order to get it on there so that's what we'll do here we'll take a 13 millimeter box in wrench and I've taken another box in wrench in combination with it in order to give myself some leverage so I can easily pull down on the on the tensioner to release tension and, and slip it on and then once you do that you just start Slide it up watch first. it run and you're ready to put it all back together and you put it back on in reverse order starting with that reservoir snap that uh, reservoir back in place All right. this is not a heavy load it doesn't have to be strained snug is good it's snug Next step is to go underneath and put the splash guard back in place. Just slide it back up in there where it belongs and fasten the two bolts uh, that, that hold it in place. Okay. Back in place. While the vehicle is still in the air, put the tire back on. Uh, attach your lug nuts. Get them generally tight. Uh, now it's time to lower the vehicle, which means to get out the jack stand, we're going to have to raise it up a bit just enough to get it off the jack stand. So we're looking for a good safe position to raise the vehicle. In case you're wondering why you need to use a jack stand, it's because you can never trust a hydraulic jack to stay up. Don't ever get under a vehicle that's only held up by a hydraulic jack because they leak. They're prone to leak and, uh, and let the vehicle drop. You, that's why you always want to use a jack stand if you don't have access to a jack stand, try a, um, a cinder blocks or blocks of wood or use just about anything that's solid to, to hold up your vehicle. And once it's out of the way, you can lower the vehicle down. I recommend lowering it as gently as possible. Uh, you turn the, the screw on the hydraulic jack, it'll drop, but you want to do it gently. More gently than me. I accidentally did a little too hard and it, it dropped quickly. Now it's time to give a final tighten to the lug nuts, again in a star pattern so they're evenly tightened. Go back and keep checking in your star pattern until everything is uniformly tight. When it's time to put the uh, wheel cover back on, uh, the, these, this model of vehicle is notorious for losing these stock wheel covers. So my recommendation is to just zip tie them on. Uh, doesn't look that great, but hey, it's a work truck anyway. I mean, it doesn't have to doesn't have to be too pretty. Uh, just I'm trim off the excess and you're good to go. Well this about wraps it up. You've accomplished a big task. It's time to close up the hood and enjoy your 2010 Ford Transit Connect XLT.